Hi all, my name is Mas Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. This is part two of the Fujifilm X-Ray Image Scanner. Today we're taking a look at the laser module. The laser scanning module that I have here is the part that yeah, produces the line scanning beam that is used to illuminate the image plate and read out the resulting light brightness from the exposed image plate and convert that into a digital image. So we have a yeah, regular plastic case here. So let's take a closer look. We have the regular warning sticker. Do not look into laser with remaining eye. Also check out that cup coffee mark in my web shop if you like that. Other than that, it says here manufactured by Suzuka Fuji Xerox. So that's actually quite interesting that Fuji and Xerox was a combined company at some point. I did not know that. It's produced in 2004, made in Japan. We have uh, some connectors here. The flat band connector here goes to what I assume is a power supply, judging from the heat sinks. At the bottom we have the output port, where you can look in through some kind of a lens here. And then there is some kind of connector over here as well. But that looks more like uh, some kind of control, so that might be the laser control and the power supply. And then it has some yellow wires going into the module here. So let's just try to open that up. The plastic isn't even that old, that's just some 15 years, but even despite that it is extremely brittle. So these click things that it has here. They, well, they just come right off. So it will be interesting to see if that was all it took. Oh, maybe one more, yeah. Whoops. Well, I did say it was brittle, but um, yeah, that kind of was a little <laughs> more brittle than expected. Just wanted to feel, give it a bit of a pull and see if these screws were actually holding down into the main enclosure, and they certainly did. Oh wow! What a nice unit! We have our laser diode sitting over here, which actually means that there is no direct connection from this part over here. That seems to be a sensor. So that's simply um, reading out the reflected light. Ah, okay, so yeah, this is the data readout sensor. We have the laser diode sitting over here, shooting down through these mirrors. There is actually a reflecting part here, going back through this lens. We have a small sensor here, we will take a closer look at that. The laser beam goes over here to the rotating mirror, which is the side of this six-faced large nut here. And then the laser beam is shot out in a scanning fashion, so that the beam goes across here, back and forth. Could also be that it is just one line at a time, so just like a flyback line scanning output transformer in old school TVs. And then another widening lens, and of course the output lens we saw over here. Then some of the reflected light must be reflected all the way over here. It's actually quite interesting where that would actually get reflected from, but that could only be in this direction. And then it's again shut down through into that sensor. The laser module itself, see it's marked here on the back side, LDA 12A Fujifilm. We have a mark for plus VLD, plus 15 volt, PM1, AG and PD. So at least we know the, the this up here is the power supply for the foot for the laser diode itself and then we have the photodiode which were the sensor sitting over here at which we can see the light from this lens reflected back into here 
So that is most likely to do with the, uh, measuring the laser brightness. That there is a lens down in front of the laser diode down here in the yeah whole calibrated mounting post here sits with two screws and not quite sure what that big gap or hole in there that is for. Perhaps to be able to adjust the yeah the focal point of the lens that would make sense. The other small detector that was sitting over here a lot more simple. As you can see that is just a very very simple photodiode sitting here. I'm not quite sure how the reflecting beam is always hitting over here. But um, maybe there's an answer to that if we look into the output reflector here. A very nice prism. It's actually quite fun to see that over here in the corner. Not sure if that shows on the video, but it's very apparent than seeing this in reflected light here that there is some kind of different coating. Yeah, you can see it here. You see blue and white in the reflective fluorescent light. That there is some kind of difference out here in what would be the output area up to the sensor. But other than that, yeah, okay, maybe it's even easier to see down through here. You can see there, there the square is. But that's a much different output lens that I have seen in other laser scanning modules. So that's, that's another nice lens to play with. So let's uh, check out the back side because the unit here is actually pretty heavy. So from just being plastic and a few glass pieces, it still seems a little bit too heavy. And there is also some kind of lid here. Let's get the elements out. Slightly curved but only just slightly. It's so little I can't actually uh, tell if it is. But a regular piece of glass lens here. And then we have the angled coated one. This is the output. This is the last piece of lens before the laser beam being shot out here. As we had the other one sitting here going straight through here to the yeah, angled, double angled one we saw first. And here we have a clear orange blue like coating on it, presumably for the filtering to the wavelength of the laser. And that seems to just work as a mirror as it is matted on all surfaces but this one. I hope you enjoyed this teardown of the laser module and saw that it is in fact not that complex. It is just a matter of a rotating motor at a certain speed in order to get a scanning line from a simple laser beam into a simple scanning diode. And that's all there is to it. One laser beam shot at a time at one XY position of the image plate and then the PMT, which we will take a look at in part three, will read out the yeah, grayscale value on that, which is something like 12 to 16 bit resolution. So thank you for watching and until next time, see ya.